Hi, everybody. Uh, we're really honored and excited to, to be here in this situation and uh, have an opportunity to share with you uh, how what, what we hope is uh, the opportunity to make something positive out of a, a tough situation. So uh, briefly give you an introduction. My name is Mark Fulmer. This is my wife, Becky. Uh, Becky is um, a, has been a math teacher, computers teacher, as well as an instructional coach throughout her career and, and continues to be an instructional coach to this day. And uh, uh, we're lucky that uh, she's also involved in leadership roles, uh, not only with IAFER, the Illinois Association, but also with uh, Shape America, the national organization. And this is my husband, Mark. And Mark uh, is just finishing up his term, had just finished up his term uh, as the president of IAFER. He also has a lot of roles in Shape Midwest and uh, as well as over the years in Shape America. And he is also a past uh, middle school, Shape Midwest middle school uh, PE toy as well. So that's given us a lot of opportunities and we really, really appreciate having those opportunities. So for this presentation, we're really hoping that we're gonna spark your thinking. We're hoping that this is going to give you an opportunity to consider ways that you might not have previously considered offering uh, up in terms of educating your students. And we think this is a perfect opportunity to do that. We also just wanted to mention that in this presentation, we're looking at it as coming from three, potentially three different ways that you might be viewing this. You might be viewing the, the video version of it, which is what you're seeing right now if you're, if you're in that video version. You might also uh, just listen to it. So we're gonna try to make sure that everything we talk about is available audio, uh, through the audio. Uh, and then lastly, you might choose to just view the slides. So we did make sure that we put everything on the slides or, or almost everything on the slides. Um, even though I know that's not the best way to create a presentation, but just in case some of you are just looking at the, the slides, uh, hopefully it will make sense. So as we get started, let's look at this from the teacher's side or point of view. And the first, first point that we want to highlight is that we're noticing a lot of health and physical education teachers getting connected on social media. There's a lot of sharing by a greater variety of teachers. Uh, a large number of teachers have gained facility using G Suite. And physical education teachers that, uh, educators that were not on social media are now starting to see how they can use technology and how that can be leveraged for improved learning. There's a greater opportunity to uh, interact with a lot more of health and physical education teachers going on right now. And this downtime, so to speak, is allowing teachers to have more time to explore deeper and therefore improve upon their uh, tech skills. And finally, the great thing about this is we have genuine teachable moments. And then on the student side and family side, of course, one of the big gains we're having is that parents are becoming more aware of how digital learning is occurring in all subject areas. And this is a crucial, crucial um, mo movement forward. Uh, students are experiencing how they can be physically active at home. A lot of kids maybe have never really bothered to move very much at home, especially with all of the video games and so on. And this is really helping kids learn how to be physically active at home. And as shown in this uh, GIF, I just absolutely love this. It's really, really awesome. Many students have learned how to create games at home using household items and even create training tools like this young lady did uh, for her volleyball skills. And it's just awesome to see this kind of ingenuity. And then many families have learned how to participate in activity together. And this is a huge deal because after this is all over, hopefully this will continue. And this is what we're really, really hoping to have everyone start thinking about is how can we keep this moving forward? And then 
families have become more knowledgeable about learning together, not only being active together, but how do we learn together? How do we uh, encourage and uh, facilitate learning as a family? And then hopefully parents are seeing that physical education is more than physical activity. And this is something uh, we feel like we have a little bit of work to do over these next few weeks. And if, uh, you know, remote learning ends up moving into the fall, it's going to be really important that we consider this as well. Um, and then physical education can occur outside of our gyms. We can truly take advantage of that going forward. And that's one of the main things that we're really going to narrow our focus to now is what we can do um, with, that, with this kind of learning outside of the classroom. And we're back. So what is this going to look like once we do get back to whatever that new normal is? Uh, and, and hopefully what we're going to share is we're going to try and share a, a more narrowed focus as we move forward. So the first thing that, uh, that we'll share with you is a flip learning or flip classroom setting. And what, before we dive right into it, I have to give some shout outs to a few people. Uh, what, what, what I'm gonna share with you is a uh, flip learning or flip classroom soccer unit. And the material, the lessons, the unit was actually something that was created by Matt Pomeroy. And, uh, and then with the aid of Becky's technology skills, and the collaborative effort with a, a doctoral student, Chad Killian, um, we were able to put this all together. Now, again, a little bit of background information. Chad Killian at the time was a doctoral student and his research was on flip learning and how much, uh, was there a difference in activity level or amounts of activity between a traditional class and a flipped classroom? And so, uh, we'll, as we go through this, I'll, I'll talk more about that uh, towards the end. But the first thing that I'd like to share with you is that soccer unit. And what we did is our students have devices and I asked them to uh, go through that day's lesson. If you could go ahead and click on that, that'd be great. They would go through that, that day's lesson ahead of time during their breakfast time. And what was really nice about that is it allowed the students to see what was going to be covered. What, what was the uh, activity? What was the skill that was going to be learned? And we, we uh, uh, pushed it out to them in various formats. Obviously, as you can see here, they can read through it. The directions are there. They could see a video. So they were visually uh, and, uh, gripped by what was going to happen. And then we would move forward through that. Oh, Becky, good, thank you. And again, this was something that was shared out by Matt and his students. So as you can see, the students are able to read through what is what, what are we supposed to be doing here? And then they could actually see the drill or the skill played out. As we move forward through that, that day's lesson, they would actually get another uh, way to see what was our explanation of what was going to happen. And then as we go through further and further in that day's lesson, at the end, we come back with some questions. And what was really important here was, this gave me the opportunity to see where the students were at. And I could, I could check this out before they got to class. So it allowed me the opportunity to uh, guide my teaching. I could see, okay, did everyone understand what today's lesson is about? If so, we can obviously jump right in quicker. If there were certain students that I may need to uh, spend a little time with, additional time with to help them through, I could do that while the rest of the group was actively engaged. So this was really, really a nice tool to have uh, moving forward. As we uh, went through this, and as I mentioned, I believe I mentioned earlier that this was a two-week unit. What we found out, or what Chad found out through his formula of figuring out, okay, how much activity time is taking place in the flipped classroom versus the traditional classroom. Now, my students meet five days a week. 
And what we found out over this unit was that the students actually gain, in the flipped classroom, gain 35 additional minutes. So for me, for my students, that was like adding a whole additional class. So in, you know, if, if looking at it, it's as if the students met six times in that one week period of time versus the normal five. And did you explain about you had them do it in the morning before I did, school? I yeah, did. So. The students would look this right. over uh, because our students, we are a one-to-one -one school, again, some background information, but our students don't take their devices home. So in the morning, there is a 20 minute window of time where, where the students are eating their breakfast. And to make it, I guess, more productive, my students were able to use their devices while they were eating breakfast and they could go through all of this during that 20 minute period of time. And as I mentioned, this allowed me the opportunity to see what the results were. I could go through those, those reflection questions at the end of each unit and see, okay, did they understand this? Do I need to reteach certain points? So, <clears throat> so that particular lesson is one, what we would call a hyperdoc because it is allowing students to use media and reading to learn and then to show you what they've learned. And HyperDocs are a very, very, very popular tool in all subject areas. I have a very extensive HyperDoc li HyperDocs library that is divided up by a subject area. And what we'd like to do is take you into the HPE HyperDocs that we currently have available and just kind of let you take a look at what these look like. Now, the thing about HyperDocs is that they come in a wide range of styles and looks. Um, sometimes people like to use Google Docs to create their HyperDocs, and sometimes people like to use Google Slides. I personally prefer using Google Slides because I can do a lot more activities right on the slides that I have the students do, um, but a lot of people do use Google Docs. And I want to explain a little bit about how the HyperDocs library is set up. You'll notice here that, for example, if we just take the cardio, there are several files that are all named cardio this, cardio that. The one that has the word HyperDoc in it is the actual main HyperDoc. That's the one that you share with your students. And usually, most frequently, people are using Google Classroom at, with HyperDocs. And the reason for that is because it's very easy to share a copy of each of these, of this file with each of your students. Each student needs their own copy because they're gonna be inputting information into that document. The other files that you'll see here, like this one, this one, and this one, those are the files that are linked to from this HyperDoc. The reason that I put those files in, into this folder for you is so that if you are wanting to use this HyperDoc, you can make copies of those files so that they're all in your own domain. Because as we've all learned from this whole process, a large number of schools do not allow students to access files in other people's Google domains. So what we want to do here is we want to give you the opportunity to have all these files. And then all you have to do is change the links. So within this HyperDoc, there are multiple links to these various files. And in some cases, we've put in the YouTube version and the uh, Drive version because, again, sometimes schools uh, block YouTube videos. So you just have to know what your situation is. But let's take a look at this so you can see what a HyperDoc looks like. You kind of saw it with Mark's uh, soccer unit. You saw one version of how that can work, especially if you're doing uh, something that's a unit where it's day after day after day. This one would be just a single day assignment more than likely, or maybe just a couple of days. And you can see that the style of this one is somewhat different of the, from the other, but it, it's very, very similar. They all include some sort of media. So this one has a, a really neat video that kind of really captures. That functions as a double cup to control a blood flow. The part of an adult male is slightly larger than that of an adult female. On average, a 
And the whole point of this is to really meet students where they are. We have to remember that worksheets and things like that, they just don't capture kids' interests these days. We have to do a lot better job of utilizing all of the, all of the information that's out there, the, all of the various media formats that are out there. And this hyperdoc is a perfect example of that because here you have some video and then they have to answer a question after they've watched it. Again, it's not just watching it and then you have no idea whether they really you know, engaged with it or understood it. Um, the next one is a little, it's called a thing link. If any of you have uh, heard of thing link before, if you click that, the students will go out to a thing link. And this has a lot of uh, hotspots on it. And you can click on the hotspot and it gives more information about each of these parts. Sometimes the hotspots also have a video and I'm not sure right now it looks, yeah, there we go. So that video is accessible. Circulatory system and the human part. And again, you can see another video there. So now they have an opportunity to learn using this particular tool. And then they return back to the HyperDoc and they have a little assignment to do. And this one, their assignment is to take each one of these uh, parts of the heart and to move them into the proper position. And so you can see if they've learned that. And they may not have learned all of these pieces from these two videos. They may have to go out and there's a note down here in the corner, move this so you guys can see it, just saying you may have to go out and do a little searching to find out where some of these are. And again, it's the kids really investigating the learning, which is super important with HyperDocs, the kids investigating the learning. And then uh, they move on and there are, there's another video about blood composition. And lastly, they have a number of different ways to show what they know. So they can do a screencastify, they can uh, use the, the uh, assignment that's listed here where they can click and get a copy, the, the teacher can click here and get a copy of the um, Google form. That's that Google form that I showed you that was over there. Um, and then you put a link to that and students use that. And then there's um, a, an area for partner reflection. This could be done individually. Um, if you wanted to use it for HPE at home right now, uh, or it could be done with partners if you're doing it maybe sometime when you lose your gym and you want to do it in the classroom and so on. So that's just one example. As I said, the thing about HyperDocs is they come in a lot of different formats. I absolutely love the mental health HyperDoc. It is outstanding. It's just a terrific, terrific way to really engage your, your kids in the health classroom. Um, and it involves a, a bunch of media. Uh, it's very, very well done, very well thought out. I would think this would be a junior high to high school lesson. And once we get it to load here, we can kind of show you. So you can see that this is a very extensive HyperDoc. Um, HyperDocs take a lot of work to put together, especially if you do one that's more involved like this one. And it's so amazing that all of these teachers have been so kind to share their hard work and allow us to take advantage of it. So this particular one, when the students get to this third slide, um, they get to choose the different topics. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you mouse over, over one of these topics and click on it, you have different aspects of um, of mental health. And so they just click on that particular one and it takes them right to the slides where it talks about that particular topic. And there are a lot of videos involved with these. Most of them are YouTube videos, but I also give both versions of it. So the drive version and the YouTube version. And um, it's just extremely, extremely well done. And then at the end of this whole entire unit, there is there are various um, videos, uh, uh, diagrams, and so on that they have to create. So if you actually go in here, there's a whole unit guide here. And if you take a look at the unit guide, it will explain how the entire unit is laid out. So, you know, I wish we could go into all of these, but we just want to show you that this is all available and for you to take a look. Some of these you might want to use just the way they are. Remember that you may need to fix the links so that they are that your students are going to be able to access them in some of these. But there are a lot of different hyperdocs already to go. 
The other thing that I want to mention is at the top, you'll notice there are four folders up here. The reason that these are in folders is because these happen to be hyperdocs that have a lot of extra links to them. So for example, the uh, developing a workout plan, if I click that one, you'll notice all the extra parts that go with developing a workout plan. Again, if you wanted to use this, you would need to either make sure that your students can access drive files outside of your domain or you would need to make copies in order to make this work but this is a terrific terrific um, op opportunity to utilize hyperdocs especially right now but even when you get back and that's one of the things that we feel is that these hyperdocs would be so useful when we get back and we're we're actually working to take advantage of having kids do some work outside of the of the classroom whether it's in the PE classroom or the health classroom they don't have to only do their work during uh, during class and I think that a lot of hyperdocs give you that opportunity now the next thing that I want to go to is the templates, tutorials, and samples, because many of you might, I think this is the, the reason that we decided to do this one is because we feel like this is the perfect time for people to start thinking about developing something that's a little more intense. We don't always have time for this, and right now is the time when we could develop it, looking forward to when we're back in school and, and everything's going uh, the way we're used to. So I wanted to show you that we do have available for you in here a whole bunch of templates. Uh, there are tutorials, there are samples, and um, this is all part of the full HyperDocs library. In fact, if you click back uh, to the HyperDocs library updated, you'll see how these are all divided up by various subject areas. But the tutorials are all available in here and when you click to open these, you'll see how these are set up in such different formats. So I mentioned to you that, you know, sometimes people use a Google Doc. So this is a basic HyperDoc lesson template that is just a Google Doc. So if you'd like to create one, you can see what the different pieces should be. So you can create a HyperDoc that just, you know, you come up with whatever topic you want to, uh, make create the hyperdoc on and then you want to have something that engages some way that the kids are exploring you might want to have a little more explanation and then a way to apply and share and i just want to jump in very quickly these are great cues to help you when you when you are developing your own hyperdoc um, they, they help direct you personally and, and i can speak from that uh, personally because this is what helped me uh, when I wrote uh, my most recent HyperDoc. And uh, it's nice to have something that not only guides you, but gets you thinking in the right direction, so to speak. Yeah, and just, you don't have to, you know, you'll find HyperDocs that have only some of these. They don't necessarily have all of them, but at least they make you think about, okay, well, how are, how are they going to apply their learning once we've taken them through this learning? And then the, the most important part to not uh, leave off, I would say, is the reflect. Always make sure that the kids are reflecting on their learning for all of us. You know, if we're not reflecting on our learning, then we're probably not going, it's probably not really going to stay with us. So we want to make sure that we're reflecting. And of course, Google Forms are a very great way to reflect, but there are lots of other tools as well, Flipgrid, things like that as well. So that kind of gets us through um, the things that we, we wanted to just sort of maybe spur your thinking about what can, how can we take advantage of all these things and try to put them into place once we're back in the classroom. So moving so forward. So moving forward, the first thing that uh, we want to make sure that we're doing is a lot of activities going on right now. That's good. That's what's needed and, and not only for the students but also for their parents and family members, but we've got to make sure that we're putting back education into physical education. Does that make sense? We wanna make sure that we are addressing that component of what our job really is all about. 
this goes back to that why. It's so important that we always include the why, not only for ourselves, but also for our students. Make sure that we're looking to scaffold our lessons. Yeah, anything that you can do to really help your students move along so that they can accomplish whatever you're asking them to accomplish first and then be able mm -hmm. to move along to the next thing that is so so important when you're when you're designing your lessons this i feel this is really important uh, because as students learning habits change we have to allow for self-discovery and exploration and as you dig deeper into the hyperdocs uh, and the little bit that we shared with you you'll see that there is opportunity for the students to do some kind of guided exploration. And I think that's really important. That's, that's gonna spur all sorts of ideas and interests. We want to, as Becky mentioned already, you have to make sure that you include reflection, questioning, and discussions. And I believe this is a great opportunity for us, especially for um, teachers who don't see their students daily. If you see your students one, two, three times a week, we have this opportunity right now to actually engage our students outside of the classroom. And this, right now, the students are used to making that connection, whether it's directly with us through a website or through a school website. And we, we have to take advantage of this opportunity now so that, yes, when we see our students in the building, we're delivering high quality physical education and health programs, but now we have an opportunity to extend that and actually make contact with them and, and, and increase that learning uh, opportunity. And because of all this, this creates a, a just a tremendous advocacy opportunity with, with our parents, as well as with our administration. When they see what we're delivering, it is really important for us to take advantage of this opportunity that's that's given right now. And we, we really hope that this just sort of got you thinking about potentials, potential things that you could be doing, I guess, with your time right now. Um, there are a lot of possibilities and even though for example, the designing a hyperdoc is a, is a time consuming proposition. We happen to have that time right now. So if you can think ahead to, you know, next January, February, March, when we're back in school, and we have the kids there, what can we be doing that can really extend the learning of our classrooms so that it's not just about what we're doing during the time that we're in that classroom, but what kind of learning can our students be doing all the time? So we have the opportunity right now, as the title says, to make lemonade from lemons. We share information here, uh, our contact information. We're always willing to help anyone who reaches out to us. We always make sure that whether it's a Google Hangout, a Zoom, whatever it might be to help you out. Um, yes, yeah, seriously, if you guys want to create a hyperdoc and you're just like, I don't even know where to begin, I am more than happy. If you have an idea, a topic, I am more than happy to, we are more than happy to, as Mark said, Zoom with you, hang out with you, do whatever to get you going. Um, it's sometimes uh, if we're given the idea, then we can really help to explore that or expand it or help you find resources that you can put into your hyperdoc. We're happy to do that. Um, you always wanna make sure you're using quality resources. And before I forget, there is the um, QR code up there. That'll get you to our whole presentation. And as Becky said, as far as resources are concerned, maybe to spark some ideas for your thinking along this uh, process, please feel free to visit our, our website, cbhpe.org, information right there down in the bottom right corner. Hopefully that will will give you some ideas and thoughts and, and spur some interest in, as we move forward uh, in a positive direction for, for our future students and teaching. Thank you so much for Thank tuning in. Thank you very in. much. Thank See you. See you guys.